hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers. It's festive season, so we're going to be taking a look at some games for our beloved Commodore 64 that will help give us some Christmas cheer. But will they be the present under the tree we always wanted, or a big old lump of coal? Well, how about I shut the hell up, you press that subscribe button, and we find out together. Merry Christmas from Melbourne House is a surprisingly charming text adventure game where you take the role of Santa and have to type various commands in order to find all the presents you need, get your reindeer in order, and then set off to deliver those presents to the ungrateful children who probably don't deserve them in the first place. Now if you watched my previous videos, and if not why not, you'll probably already know that I'm not really a fan of these sorts of games, but I actually did find myself wanting to keep playing this one to help the kids get their gifts. This could be because it's deliberately much easier and shorter than most games like this, so I didn't spend hours on the first screen and did actually manage to figure out what I was meant to do. Also, the graphics here are pretty good which help with finding all the items. You can also type in commands to find out what actions you have available to you and this really helps. You get a cute version of Jingle Bells playing on repeat which surprisingly doesn't get too annoying and overall helps give the game a bit of festive cheer. This would be good to play with a younger kid as they can probably help you figure out what to do. Also I believe this was a free game that was given away by Melbourne House which makes it even sweeter. Snowman is a simple game where you have to throw snowballs at targets that pop up. Hit enough of them and you'll get a high score, and sometimes Santa will even give you a present. Of course, you don't want to hit all the targets as some are just friendly skiers looking to have a good time, so make sure you only aim at those pesky snowmen as they're clearly evil, or if you see any targets that move, be sure to hit them. The controls are simple, you move the joystick and that's your cursor, and you move it around and you press the fire button to shoot, and really that's all there is to the game. You just do that on repeat until you get bored, which will probably take about 10 minutes. You do get a variety of Christmas songs playing in the background, but there's no actual sound effects, but at least it's not just one song on repeat, though I didn't recognise all of the tunes, not that that matters in the slightest. Overall, this is a fine game, it'll amuse you for a few minutes, but probably not one you're going to come back to. Winter Camp, released in 1992, is one of those sports minigame collections where you spend most of the time trying to figure out how to control everything and failing miserably. But it's also kind of fun. The graphics here are pretty good and it all sounds half decent. You have a range of activities from skating and racing to snowball fights and even music memorising puzzles. These even feature the monster thing from Creatures if you've ever played that. I was actually pretty impressed with the variety of games here, and to be honest, after a short while I found that most of the games are actually pretty decent to control and good fun to play. It definitely kept me coming back to see what was going to be coming up next. Sadly, as far as I can tell, this is only a one player game, but it would have been great to play with some friends, though I guess it's mostly score based so you could just take it in turns. Definitely do check this one out, it's one that you'll want to come back to regularly. We'll stick with the sports collections with Winter Games. This one lets you and a few mates take turns in competing in a range of sports that, surprisingly, are all pretty fun to play. The graphics here are decent and you get a cool intro, as well as some pretty detailed sports with good animation. As it's the C64, you will be seeing a lot of loading screens between all of the action, which can mean at the start you're actually watching more loading screens than actually playing while you get used to the controls. Some sports are definitely tougher than others, with skeet shooting especially being quite confusing, though I did still enjoy it, but probably the worst one for me was the figure skating, I just couldn't figure it out at all. Ha, <laughs> get it. And then there's the bobsleigh, which was really fun actually, and yes, I did have cool runnings in my head most of the time while I was playing it. This is a good one to play with mates if you can. Coney Island is a simple game, which seemed like fun, but I'll be honest, the controls were just broken for me, which I think was a me problem and not the game. For some reason I could only move down and right, I think Vice was having issues with this one. Anyway, from what I can gather, this is a game where you play as a funky penguin who has an ice cream stand, and you just have to get your customers their orders before they get bored and go away. The trouble is, the floating islands of ice cream, or whatever it's meant to be, are constantly moving, so you've got to be quick in getting them, while also making sure the current doesn't wash you away off the screen. 
The one or two times I did manage to almost play this properly, I did kind of enjoy it, and I can see that it would be quite an addictive game. It looks pretty basic, but it's still one that's worth taking a look at if you can. Hopefully the controls won't go mad for you like they did for me. Hey, it's time for another mini sports game here with Eskimo Games, and like the other ones we've seen on this list, they're actually pretty good fun. Once again, you and a few friends can compete for high scores in a range of events. You have snowball fights, igloo building, egg collecting and more, and they're all good fun and actually intuitive to play. The game looks great, there's usually loads going on in the levels while you're competing in the games, and there's plenty of animation and everything is very colourful. Each of the different games have a slightly different look, but with decent sprites, everything's very well drawn. The variety and fun factor of the events here is also really good, and the soundtrack is great, with a Sid version of Don't Worry Be Happy playing throughout. The games do get tricky though, and most of them will require you to play them a couple of times before you really get the hang of them. This is a great game to play with some mates, or you know what, even on your own. Definitely check it out. If you want to get a little fruity this Christmas, but have run out of mistletoe, then Maria's Christmas Box is the game for you. I'll cut to the chase, it's just a strip poker game, with the model Maria Whitaker, who some of you may know from the awesome cover of Barbarian 2, which is actually where I first saw her. So yeah, it's poker, so I guess your enjoyment of this game all depends on if you like poker. If you do, and are a fan of this model, then you're in luck, as yes, if you're good enough, you will get to see some poorly digitised Maria boobies. And really, that's all there is to the game. It's poker, you play your hand and hope you win. There's a couple of clicks for the sound effects, but nothing in the way of music. It's fine, though if you do need to play this game, I would recommend the Amiga version instead, as they use proper photos rather than the strange 8-bit versions here, so the boobs look better. And let's be honest, that's the real reason any of us are playing this game. I mean, that's the reason I was playing. Santa's Boulder Dash Party is just that, a Boulder Dash clone where everything is Christmas themed, and I'm okay with that, it's just a shame I suck at Boulder Dash. You have a load of pretty large levels where you, as Santa, have to collect items and make baubles drop on presents. It's kind of part platform, part puzzle, but all balls hard, at least it was for me. The aforementioned evil presents move very jerkily, making predicting them very tough. In fact, everything here moves very jerkily, as it's tile based and you move from square to square. I really didn't like it. The graphics here are also way too basic, and although Santa's walk animation is cool, for some reason he's green and looks more like an evil zombie Santa than jolly old Saint Nick. If you like Boulder Dash, then you might well like this one, but if you're anything like me, you probably won't. If a naughty Saint Nick is your kind of thing, then you'll want to check out Santa's Grotty Christmas, where you control a drunk Santa as he delivers presents to some lucky kids and bowel movements to unlucky kids. As you fly through the sky, you'll be dropping a variety of things from yourself into chimneys and toilets in order to get high scores, and if you hit those naughty little snowmen, they'll show you a little something something. Santa has clearly been on the crack though, as all sorts of festive things are out to kill you, and if you touch anything, then your sleigh explodes, just like it does in real life. The graphics here are pretty basic, but yeah, you can see what everything's meant to be. The controls are fine and they work, you get a few levels you can choose from, though really they all play basically the same. You get a couple of different Christmas songs playing, which sound okay, but there's no other sound, though that's probably a good thing considering what you'd be hearing. What's strange here is that if you stop moving, time actually freezes, which can actually help you as you can decide what your next move will be to help you avoid the obstacles. It's almost like a Christmas super hot on the C64, but not at all. This one will amuse you for about 5 minutes, and then you'll completely forget it exists, just like I did until it came to editing this video. Now it's time for some more Santa Claus here, and this game is cunningly called Santa Claus. And yeah, you play as Kris Kringle himself as you fly through different countries delivering presents, and you can tell you're in different countries by the abundance of flags that are all over the place. 
Of course, your mission here is to drop peasants into the houses to score points, though this year as Santa is being pretty stingy as everyone is only getting a lame candy cane. No wonder people stop believing in you. But don't worry, I still believe. Anyway, while you're flying, you'll be avoiding the regular air traffic that every city has. Planes, helicopters and of course nighttime hot air balloons. It all looks very basic and has quite a high-pitched screechy version of Santa Claus is coming to town that play. These things don't do the game any favours. This one isn't really all that fun to play. It controls well enough, but overall it's just too basic and slow. Even younger kids, who I'm guessing it's aimed at, will probably get tired of this after just a few minutes. Santa Claus Plus is a very basic maze game where you, yep, play as Santa, and you just have to navigate your way through a massive maze collecting squares that we will just assume are meant to be presents. This game is about as basic as it gets. There's no animation at all, and the graphics here look like a child drew them. There's no music, and only a beeping sound when you collect a square. Also, as far as I can tell, there's just one level. I collected loads of presents and filled up the bar at the bottom of the screen, but nothing seemed to happen. Also, the collision detection is pretty shoddy, and you have to be pixel perfect with the things you want to collect. This also includes the walls, which will damage you if you touch them. Though, to be honest, I can't really see anyone playing this game long enough to really give a damn. Santa's Christmas Capers is a hard as nails shooter, where you have a few levels filled with all sorts of possessed toys and Christmas stuff that you've got to shoot the hell out of in order to save Christmas. And man, this game is tough. I started playing without any cheats, and I really struggled to even get past the first level. And the thing is, even with cheats though, I had a lot of fun playing it. Each of the levels is different enough, and there's even boss fights for you to do. The graphics here are decent and it's all very smooth, you'll need to learn enemy patterns and placement and you're often better off avoiding enemies rather than trying to kill them. What is a bit of a shame is that there's no power-ups or weapons at all throughout the game, and although there are bosses, they're all basically the same, just reskinned and way easier than the normal enemies for the most part. As you'd expect, with the music you get a few Christmas tunes to listen to and they all sound pretty good. Overall, this was a lot more fun than I expected it to be. But yeah, it really isn't easy, so there's no shame in playing through the game with infinite lives. And finally for today is Santa Claus's Helper, a very strange and ultimately pointless game. Yep, you once again play as Santa, and as you're flying through the sky, you just have to collect the 99 presents that had gone missing. The game looks incredibly basic with just two frames of animation, and you're treated to a never-ending loop of jingle bells, which actually, to be fair, doesn't sound bad at all. The game also controls quite well, being pretty responsive. The problem here though is that if you touch anything, you lose some of the presents that you've collected, and most of the time it's literally impossible to avoid the scenery, making the game basically impossible, and so it will just go on forever. You also get a time limit, which is totally unnecessary. It's just the fact that you never really feel like you're making any progress here that makes the game just not that fun to play. Also, something that's quite odd is that half the screen is taken up by the title of the game and there is a constant scrolling text bar, which does actually kind of tell you that this game was made as part of a competition, so we should probably cut it some slack as it was only probably made in a couple of days. However, it's really not that fun to play, at least not after about three minutes. But if you really need something Christmassy and you can't get hold of Maria's Christmas box, then I suppose this will have to do. So there you go, a bunch of games to give you that festive feeling. What other games are there on the C64? Let us know in the comments below. On screen now you can see where you can follow us, so why not do so, we've got loads of cool content for you to enjoy. Now all that's left for me to say is thank you for joining us, we'll see you next time, and most importantly, Merry Christmas.